Now interview season is coming up and it can be quite anxiety provoking. In this video, we'll be talking about certain principles that you need to know before answering questions in an interview and 20 key tips that you should keep in mind before attending your interview. Now interview season's coming up and there's an abundance of applicants. So what can you do to stand out? I've consumed a lot of content, did a lot of research and asked a lot of interviewees on tips that they use to master their interviewing process. And I try to compile it all into one place so you can master your interview technique. So in this video, we're gonna be going through a lot. So I'm gonna get right to the point and try to get through it quickly. Now, if you have any questions at all, feel free to leave a comment in the comment section down below or you can add me on Instagram at Dr. Chala and send me a message over there. And if you found this content helpful, please Please leave a like and subscribe for more content like this in the future. Now before getting to the tips, there are four certain principles that you should keep in mind before attending your interview. Now the principles are know your audience, know your content, stay structured, and stay short. Now let's we'll start with the first one, know your audience. Now it's important to go and do your research about your programs before interviewing at them. Now with this information, you can modify your interview technique to that particular program. Now there are several ways to research about your program. The first one includes going through their website. It's important to go through their website and know pretty much all the policies, whether it's a four plus one system, whether they have research, whether they have fellows. Other ways to prepare include going through Frida, which is an online database of different residency programs and shows the different rules that pertains to the residency program. And I'll leave a link down below for your convenience. Some people I know also went through the research that the faculty indulged in just to use it as a talking point. And so later when the interviewer says, why our program? You can also say, I've read this research paper and it really resonated with me. You can go through some online forums like Student Doctor Network to see what other people have said about the program. Next, it's know your content. Now this refers to knowing everything that's on your ERS application. Try to review your application in your personal statement because you want to be be prepared. Now they can use anything that's on your resume and ask you questions about it. And it's quite common that we actually won't remember what we've done. They could ask you about research that you participated two years ago and you might have forgotten. This is why it's important to be prepared to answer any questions. The next principle is to stay structured. Now every answer should have three components, an opening, a body, and an end. Now an opening would be the answer to the question. A body should be an example that fortifies the answer and an end should be just a summary. Now it's very important to always use an example to fortify your opening answer. Just because these program directors and interviewers hear a lot of the same answers every day, your example or your story can be what's unique to you and that's what's gonna help you stand out. And the end is just you wrapping up. This is why this is my strength or this is why this is my weakness. Last is to stay short. Now it's really important not to just ramble on and talk and talk and talk. When someone asks you a question and you're not prepared for it, sometimes people have a tendency of just talking on and on until they find their own point. This can be harmful because it can make the interviewer lose focus. This is why when you're asked a question that you don't know, it's okay to take a pause, think of your answer, and then give a structured answer. But why are you thinking of the answer? You don't want us to look confused. You can say something like, hmm, that's an interesting question, or that's a good question, and take a second to think about it. So we've gone through the principles. Know your audience, know your content, stay structured, and stay short. Now I'm gonna talk about 20 useful tips that will help you master your interview technique. I also know that with this year, there's gonna be virtual interviews. That's why I tried to keep my tips as universal as possible so that it applies to both scenarios. Now some may not apply to the other, but I did my best to keep them as universal as possible. Now I'll start with the first one. Don't worry about your credentials. Everyone goes to an interview worrying, am I good enough for this program? Will they like what's on my resume? But remember, if you've gotten the interview already, that means you've already met the professional requirements to be at the interview. The interview is just a place where you can showcase your personality and show the program that you're a great person to work with. Remember, even if you don't have the greatest application, they'd want to work with someone who's fun and nice to work with instead of someone who's stern and quite negative. Tip number two, be humble, but be confident. Most people have the tendency of underplaying their own achievements. But remember, you're at a residency interview and you want to sell yourself. You're trying to prove to the interviewer that you are confident and you have the capabilities to take that job. But confidence can be a double-edged sword. You don't want to be someone who's too overconfident. For example, if they say, what are your worries about residency? You don't want to say, I'm not worried about residency. But instead you can say, I know residency is tough, but I'm prepared to do what it needs to take to become a good physician. The next two tips are quite interesting and they're behavioral techniques that are used to try to lead your interview the right way. 
here. The next tip is called bridging. Now, bridging is a concept where you lead the interviewer down a certain path. There are certain times that an interview can go down a certain path and you're not prepared to answer those questions. So in times like that, you can use phrases like, yeah, but in addition to that, or I don't know the answer to that, but let me tell you about this. So you're redirecting the path of an interview so you don't go to a place where you're not prepared. And the fourth tip is called hooking. Now, hooking is different for bridging. It's more or less leaving bait or a hook for the interview to take and go a certain path. Let's take an example. You did a research project, but you don't remember much about it, but you find the interview going down that path. So in times like this, you can say something like, yeah, I did work on project number one, and this helped me attain the skills to do project number two. And in this project, I play a very different but interesting role. Now the interviewer has no choice but to ask, what was that role or what was this research project? You can also say something like, I have other experience that has proven to be useful over here, or you may also be interested in this project that I've done. Now it's going to take a little time to make this more natural, so I'd say practice with friends or family. And remember, this might not work all the time, so don't be thrown off guard when it doesn't work. Now, your next tip is very important. Always remember to ask questions. There's gonna be a point in every interview where the interviewer asks, do you have any questions for us? Now, it's true that 80% of the questions will be covered by the presentation or by the residents, but it's always good to keep a list of questions ready to answer. Now, there are a few things that you should be careful when asking questions. You don't wanna ask obvious questions that makes it just look like you're ill-prepared. Also, don't ask questions that's gonna make the program defensive. If you know the program doesn't have much research, then don't ask them about research because it's just gonna make the interviewer defensive. I'm gonna leave a list of common questions down in the description down below for you to keep ready before your interview. Don't use your phone or computer on the interview day. Now you may think that you're checking your phone when no one's looking, but people always know. Always go the formal route instead of assuming that people are okay in the sense that if you have a phone call that you really need to take, just ask the program coordinator or ask the resident saying that I'm getting a phone call, is it okay if I answer this? More often than not, they will say yes, you can, but it's always good to be formal. Now the next tip is really important. Every time you interview at a program, there are gonna be three to four interviewers interviewing you. Of the three to four interviews, there's going to be one that doesn't go well. Most of the time, this is a tactic where interviewers play good cop, bad cop, and they want to see how you do when people ask you difficult questions. And it's quite common if you can't answer any questions or things go down the wrong path. So don't let this one interview affect your other interviews. Some people let it go to their head and they end up messing up their entire interview for something that was planned all along. So keep your cool and whatever happens, happens. Now the next tip is something I read online and I felt like it was really important. The audience is not just a sponge, but it's a mirror. Now try to observe the interviewer's gestures. Now if they're looking at the time or looking at the side, it means that they're starting to lose focus. That means you should wrap that point up quickly. Second, you should try to assess what kind of interviewer a person is. Now if he seems stern and professional, just smile and keep to the point. But if the person seems more easygoing, it's okay to be funny and throw some humor into it. Try to understand how the interviewers react. If you say one thing and two to three interviewers don't like it, cut it out of your entire preparation. Over time, your interviewing techniques can get better and better because you're gonna see what works with most people. And this brings me to the next point. Schedule your important interviews later on in your interview season. Over the course of the interview trail, your responses are gonna get better and better. With each each interview you'll learn a little bit more and your interview technique will sharpen along with it. I personally scheduled all my important interviews towards the second half and used my initial interviews as mock interviews. Now let's get to the 10th tip. Your demeanor is very important. You want to sit firmly, don't move your hands and maintain eye contact. Always smile. And I know smiling is going to be a little bit more difficult over a Zoom or virtual interview because you'll be able to see yourself. But this is why you should practice this beforehand. Again, maintain eye contact. You don't want to look left or right because it shows that you're losing focus. And and that you're easily distractible. Try not to slouch your shoulders. Instead, kind of keep your back straight so it shows that you're a confident person. Always look professional and be calm. You don't want to be anxious because people really don't want to work with someone who's very fidgety and anxious all the time. Make sure that you're always on time. Now this means that you're at the interview 20 to 30 minutes prior. Try to be prepared and get some phone numbers or give your phone number just in case you get lost or for a virtual interview, your Zoom connection gets lost. And to do this, just talk to your coordinators beforehand. You can take their phone numbers just in case something goes wrong. Now the next tip is very important and you shouldn't be afraid to correct yourself. Again, as I said before, it's very easy for an interview to go down the wrong path. They can start asking you questions or take the wrong meaning of something that you said. At times like this, you can just stop and say, oh, by that I meant this. For example, in one of my interviews, I told the interviewer that I like to run and he automatically assumed that I was a runner and he asked me how many marathons I ran. Then I, had, I stopped and corrected him saying that, oh, I just like to run recreationally for fun. Don't start that sentence off with a negative saying, oh, I'm not a runner or I'm not an expert. Instead, you could say by an expert, I meant 
and continue on. The next one's really important for IMGs. I would suggest that it's really important for you to keep up with current events. Now, when interviewing in a particular place, try to find out how the local games were recently. Try to know what's going on with politics, but try to avoid taking a stance and being neutral because this can be very controversial and it can go down a wrong path quickly. Now, the next step is something I've already talked about earlier. When you're thrown off, it's okay to pause and think. There are gonna be times when the interviewer is gonna ask you difficult questions. This time you don't want to just sit and talk and talk and talk until you find your own point. Take a moment, say something like, hmm, that's an interesting question, and think about your answer. Now this pause might seem like an eternity, but it really isn't. It's going to show that you're calm, composed, can think under pressure without getting anxious. Now tip number 15 is send emails to the program. Now it can be argued that this is or isn't required, but my thought process is more along the lines of it won't hurt. Now some people say that you should send a program an email every two weeks, and I'm not a big fan of this because if you were a program coordinator and you were getting an email from a person every two weeks, it's just going to annoy them more than anything else. But that's my personal opinion. I think there are three and arguably four times that you should send emails to a program. The first time is just two to three days after you send in your application. This is when you tell the program that you're very interested in interviewing at their program and that you'd love the opportunity to meet the faculty and interview there. Try to be as less generic as possible and for the programs that you're very keen on interviewing at, I'd say make those emails as personalized as possible. You should also send emails to a program to update them on any significant changes in your resume. Let it be getting ECFMG certified or getting publications or getting new externships or clinical rotation. You want to be able to update the program to know that you're still working on your resume. But try not to send an email for each and every tiny accomplishment. For example, after I sent in my application, I've gotten at least three to four publications, but I didn't send them an email after each and every single one. Instead, I put them all in one email and sent it to them. But at the same time, you don't want to wait too long and send them an email after they're done reviewing applicants. Always send thank you emails. I think that this is a really way of showing appreciation and gratitude. Try to take note of some unique things that you've noticed or something that an interviewer said that resonated with you. And you can use this in the email. It shows that you pay attention and you were really listening to them and you actually had a connection with them. Now, some people are argue for and against the last time to send an email, and this is right before your rank order list. Now, I think this is good for two reasons, to show the program that you're still interested and to remind them that you exist because they will have interviewed hundreds of applicants. And no matter how good you were, you don't want them to forget you. It's really important to assess the program for yourself. Not only are they interviewing you, you're also checking to see if that program is the right fit for you. And so there are different things that you may or may not want to look at. Now, these are a list of things that I think may be important to look at while going to an interview. Is it a four plus one system or a block system? Do they have research? Is there an in-house fellowship? Do they accept in-house fellows? Or even if they don't, how is their fellowship match rate? And this fellowship match rate is basically the percentage of people who applied for a fellowship and got it. You want to see the board pass rate. You want to see if they have a night flow or not. And I personally looked at this just because if they do have a night flow or a night team, that means that your number of 24 hour calls will be less because there'll be a separate team to handle all the patients at the night. I also personally like looking at the cafeteria because this will be the food that you'll eat for the next three years. Now, I know that this may be difficult for virtual interviews, but this is something to just keep in mind. You want to know which EMR they use or how many different EMRs that you have to learn, and also probably when the deadline for step three is. Now, these are subjective, and I'm pretty sure everyone has different priorities, but these are some things that I looked at when I was applying for residency. Now, this next tip is something that's very important, and I only started picking up after I saw my friend doing it, and this is to document your experience after each interview. After going through several interviews, it's really easy to forget what happened in which interview and you'll end up generalizing all of them. And by the time you create your rank order list, you're going to forget so many things about the program. So I would suggest you to make an Excel sheet with 10 to 20 different subheadings of different factors like location, cafeteria, fellowship, research, and other things that you feel may or may not be important for you. Give each component a rating. Now for you, if location is very important, then the location will be on a scale of 1 to 10, whereas cafeteria may not be, so it'll be on a scale of 1 to 3. And at the end, I just added all these up and it gave a numerical score to help me compare two very close programs. Again, this entire Excel sheet is very subjective and changes from person to person, but I would definitely encourage you for you to do so. Now try to find out your personal quirks and work on them. Now there are certain things that we do from day to day and we don't even know it. It may be moving your leg a lot, moving your hands a lot. Sometimes we just look from side to side and these are small personal quirks that we should be working on. Many IMGs I know had the problem of, of saying okay before every sentence. So when the interviewer would say, tell me about yourself, the applicant would just say okay and start. But that's a personal quirk that the person didn't identify until after their interview. And these things can be repetitive. So next time they ask you, tell me about yourself, you can change it up by saying stuff like, yeah, sure, of 
of course and start your answer. Now most people don't know their own quirks and the best way to work on this is by having your friends or family interview you and having them tell you what to change. Remember, humor is good but sarcasm isn't. Now I might be generalizing this way too much but it's always good to incorporate some humor into your entire interviewing style. Again, assess the interviewer to see if they're okay with it or the type of person that would like it. But try to refrain from sarcasm because sarcasm often portrays negativity. I have a friend who's a great guy but he's way too sarcastic and it's very easy to take him the wrong way sometimes. A little bit of humor is always good to maintain a comfortable environment, but remember, you still always want to be professional. Now my last tip is just to stay calm and relaxed. I know we talked a lot about things that you should and shouldn't do, but don't let them stress you or negatively impact you that you have to learn so much. Try to incorporate as many of these things as you can into your interview style, and if you can't, it's still okay. We've all messed up here and there in interviews, and it's perfectly normal. The interviewing environment is very relaxed, and it's more like a conversation with a person. Now these are 20 interview tips that I found important to master your interview tips. If you want me to make a video about the common questions asked in an interview and how to structure a proper answer, leave a comment in the comment section down below. If you have any questions at all, again, leave a comment in the comment section down below or add me on Instagram at Dr. Chawla and I'll be sure to answer your questions as soon as possible. And if you found this content helpful, please leave a like and subscribe for more future content like this in the future. And while you're still here, check out some other videos on my channel. My videos are aimed to help IMGs with the entire USMLE process and help them match into residency. Good luck.